Duck me. 15 mil minis that look 28 mil. Your new historical army awaits. Hey peeps, welcome to another bumper show of the weekender. It's going to be good because Ben and Jerry are laughing already. <laughs> yeah. But before we get stuck into that, I have to do an American style intro. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. to introduce us all because they're getting grief in the comments about people not knowing who we're called. Who we're called. Who we are we, called. Who we are called. <laughs> what our names are. So here we go. <laughs> hey, we've got the big man, Jerry. Wave, Jerry, says everyone knows who I'm talking about. There you go, look. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> We've got the Care Bear to my other side here called Ben. Hello, Hello. Ben. Care Bear, that's Care nice. Bear. And we got free down below. Hi, hi. It seems you've missed the memo today, Lloyd, on, on the yeah, colours. I, I seem to have missed that. I seem to be the one going down to the planet to be killed. <laughs> <laughs> and as Every free, party needs a red shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and as Free so rightly pointed out, I have to do that awkward thing where I introduce myself, and I'm Lloyd. God, I hate doing that. So there you go. Consider us all introduced. Don't give us any crap in the comments this week about it. <laughs> you've been told. Twice now, because you've already watched the intro. <laughs> yeah. True. Yeah. Double trouble. Right, peeps. Since we got that out of the way and everybody's up to speed and happy with who we are, let's get stuck straight into the show with India of the Week. Oh, I don't get any reverb at all. Oh, no, I guess. No, in the of the week. Keep, you need a keep, massive keep. cathedral-like vault to sit you in. Like the yeah. <laughs> so what have we got, peeps? I think it's going to be good. We're going into the world of the very, very small. Ooh. How small? Because I've been, I've been looking at this recently. <laughs> oh. um, so we're having a look at Totants. Mm. Nice. Uh, who work... Pr- I was going to say primarily, they work exclusively in 15 millimeter. Ah, okay. um, what a spanking range they do, especially when you see these uh, and then you go, oh, but surely those ones might be 28 mil. And you go, no, no, they're not. They just have ridiculous painters on their side. <laughs> no. These aren't 28 mil, for example, here. No, none of them are. All That's of them, crazy good. All of them are mm. 15s. Uh, I think a lot of the stuff is, is painted by uh, Heresy Branch, uh, wow. Ruben. Amazing. But, uh, mostly focusing on uh, Europe um, for the Thirty Years' War, which is mm-hmm. where I picked up the uh, Turcos um, rule set from. But they do some absolutely spanking figures throughout. Uh, even when they sort of delve into some of the other periods later on, as we shall see, as you calmly click on everything, open everything, everything. <laughs> everything. <laughs> Do all. Look at that. Yeah. So uh, the lines themselves, obviously, if if you're playing your historics, uh, incredibly good for the, oh, the Thirty Years' the War. Oh, you've killed the site. Never do that. <laughs> that one. But also because the the arms and armament is very similar um, in around the Thirty Years' War, this could also be used for things like um, English Civil War. Oh, right, uh, awesome! Yeah. Because it's it's that time period, and you know, mm-hmm. a lot of the the arms and armament um, across Europe is very similar. So they could easily be uh, some royalist uh, cavaliers as much yeah, as they're yeah. just medium infantry, and obviously new model army a go go there. Mm-hmm. With your buff coats. So where are they? Where are they actually from? Is this a Spanish army or what is this? We're looking um, at. Well, th- this is part of their Spanish range for the Thirty Years. Yeah. I love those little dinky cannons. They're great. Mm. They're incredible. Yeah. Little light oh. cannons. They're tiny. I- I'm still blown away with how much detail each individual in it has got. To be yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the sculptors you- are absolutely yeah. superb. I was going to say you can tell by some of the particular poses that they're smaller than. 28 mm. just due to the kind of the way that they're, they're standing and stuff but as you say the painting and sculpting on these is fantastic it's really good yeah yeah so is this um is this musketeer type time is that what we're talking about 
No, What's the must period be... here. Who's fighting who in the Thirty uh, in, Years' War? In, in the Thirty Years' War, yeah. everybody's fighting everyone. All right. um, <laughs> all it, war. It, it, it started as the War of Spanish Succession, and then mm -hmm. it ended up involving pretty much everybody in Europe, from Sweden in the north, all the way across to Poland and Lithuania. Uh, in the east to Spain, France, uh, England a little bit in the west, um, uh, and even the Italians got in on it. So mm. with this with this neck of the woods, everybody can have a punch at somebody. And like I say, <laughs> if you no, want to just I... play on then and do the um, the English Civil War, then that's also very viable. Yeah, because you did have you say, the Carassier and the like. Did you say these were metal, Jerry? Yeah, these are all metal. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I do good. like a good metal miniature, especially yeah. in that smaller scale as well, I think. Yeah. I mean, the uh, uh, pike and shot is, is always mm. good, clean family fun. I do like how they base all their stuff individually. That's an imp that is a patient person basing individually. <laughs> that is a patient person. Oh, yeah, because I would have just glued them down to a 40 mil square. And <laughs> just <laughs> done the whole thing in one go. Slap yeah. some texture on it. Away you go. <laughs> Onwards oh. and upwards. I'm digging it a lot. I'm going to dig the, the Polish faction even more when we get to it, because I did have yeah. a sneaky peek just before I, they come on. I would imagine the majority of these, because of the scale, are also single piece, apart from things like maybe the spike, the spikes, the pikes. And things Pi like yeah, that. pikes so, and the yeah. like will be, yeah. mm. pikes and lances yeah. will be individual. But nice. everything else is, is going to be a one piece, because they're 15 mil. Nobody wants yeah. to have to... Multi-part 15 mil. Seen companies do it. It's not been a pretty sight. If I, nobody if I bring nobody up, wants to see it. Yeah, if I bring up the greens, then you can get an idea of what the details like before you actually paint oh, them. Brilliant. Yeah. That's sweet. Right. I, oh, uh, oh, did it come in these oh, bottles then? Oh. <laughs> That's nice. Lloyd's, Lloyd's doing some more shopping this this week. <laughs> <laughs> no, if we're gonna good. Do, if we're going to do shopping, what do you see this? We see the Eastern Eagles. Oh, my goodness. So this is your Polish and Lithuanian. Oh, very good. Very cool. Um, you know. oh, wow. I mean, a, a feather in your hat is just practical, isn't it? <laughs> it's how people know that you mean business. <laughs> There's everybody's favorite. I do that in my hat. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. They're all. Really awesome. is, yeah. I know those tartars you'd be able to use in other periods anyway, because mm. they really didn't change for one of those very evergreen years. units. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you're, you're. I mean, doing... you, you could use the tartars in um, your Saracen forces. Yes, mm. I was going to say because you could do Northern Crusades, um, and these guys could you could use that. Hmm. As the Mongols and stuff, I think the Mongols got involved. You could just say that these Tartars are Mongols and stuff like that, because it's mm. a similar-ish sort of look and thing to them. <laughs> Ish, but I'm very much really, so. But I mean, just uh, the, the actual the detail on the the Cossacks and the like is something to really uh, just bask in. I suppose mm. is the best way. I mean, uh, one of the interesting oh, things wow. they do, yeah. and. I don't know if we've if you can really notice it when you're just flicking through, is that they don't like a single foot command group. They don't you know, they don't want people to go, here's five units on the, the tabletop and they've all got the exact same three blokes leading them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So rather than do tons and tons of different sculpts for the actual uh units, they do additional command groups so that you can have that variety because People that's tend that's to cool. notice those on the tabletop more than the actual yeah. people making up the unit. Like this one here that we're looking at. Yeah. Well, those are the ones that have the flags, so you're drawn yeah. towards them. Yeah, you're them, drawn to so. them. Yeah. Yeah. And it gives you a bit more individuality then as well when you're looking at them. Do you say it's a Lloyd shot when it when it's cut off at the bottom, is it? No, no. no, no. no. Lloyd, Lloyd, <laughs> Lloyd shot is from behind. <laughs> This is oh, just infuriating to Lloyd. This is... <laughs> <laughs> The, the thing I like about the, the Polish forces is just how long they kept wearing chainmail and stuff like that. Mm. Well, if it's not broke, don't fix it, I guess. Oh. Yeah, mind, so, yeah. But you're getting shot at with muskets and you're still wearing chainmail. <laughs> yeah, but, but you're also a Cossack, so you're like, I don't care. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the, the Gallo Glass did the same thing. Mm. In Ireland, they were still wearing chainmail when the Elizabethan War started. Yeah. They didn't really care. 
Technically, folks were still wearing chain mail in World War One, weren't they? Mm. To a certain degree as well. So, well, wow. cer- they're certainly breastplates. Yeah, yeah. So full full plates and stuff for uh, yeah. snipers. But yeah, you can see there some of the foot Cossacks, which oh, are pretty super. Look at that shirtless fellow. Oh, I mean, oh there's, yeah. <laughs> there's just a wealth of detail in these sculpts. Amazing. That's a complete different mindset there. I'm going to go in and chain mail. I'm going to go in shirtless. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, thing that's nice, the thing that's nice about those is that even though like they're all essentially very similar heads, I like that they've got the facial hair on there to kind of like make the make the difference up. Mm-hmm. Whereas other models would do it with kind of hats and things. You know, you've got Cossacks and you've got big bushy mustaches. So, yeah. It's, it's a good look. It yeah. is a good look. They're all very individually different poses as well. Oh, we didn't even get down to the wing saurs yet. Yeah. No. Heck, they're coming. This, this, <laughs> this, this is the faction for me. This is the one <laughs> this is it. that's going to cost me money this weekend. <laughs> the other thing I was going to say as well, we're looking at these, is that um, I've seen like black powder, not black powder, but like pike and shot and stuff mm-hmm. listed mm-hmm. in there and yep. black powder. But you, you've got two books there as well that they pr- they produce, is it? Yeah, they, they've got their own system, which rule is... Rule yeah. 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 But, but when they go in, they do have a little rule set part on the site, which just contains various games. So Impetus is in there, which is a big one. Mm-hmm. Uh, black powder slash pike and shot, which is the, the supplement for it. Um, and then Kingdoms. Uh, the two books I have, Kingdoms, is the actual rule set. And then there's an additional book, which is... Sorry, Mil- Liber Militum is the, the main book. Kingdoms right. is the expansion. And Kingdoms just gives you additional uh, force lists mm-hmm. to use it, within that period. Is it this? Because I keep skipping yeah. this. Is this yeah, 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 yeah. Libra Militum. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I mean, so the um, the system itself looks relatively simple. I've only had it about a week, so I haven't had a chance to start poking through it yet in cool. depth. Cool. Um, but... So they- but there's a nice thing- command and control. Yeah, it's, it comes out. They do. They they sell it in uh, Spanish as well, but they do Fantastic. an English version, which is good because I can't speak Spanish. Um, <laughs> but the Kingdom Supplement can, uh, covers parliamentarians and royalists for ECW, Scottish Covenant, the Montrose, Irish Confederation, Polish Lithuanian, Ottoman Empire. Russian Tsardom, Kingdom of Croatia, Hungary, Tartars and Cossacks. So a lot of the stuff we're looking at here. And then the the main Turkos um Libra Militum book yeah. uh is just a sort of generic seven years war one where okay, cool. uh, yeah. they give you a bit of game history and background, but largely um it's it's kind of, you know, you do your own Mm-hmm. Uh, research on it and then figure out what is the best way to represent the force you're playing. Yeah. You know. And and these would be awesome for a 40k diorama as well. Isn't it 40, <laughs> isn't it 40k that again the, the new winged hussar looking faction? It's not enough skulls on it. Is that Age of Sigmar or 40k that's getting oh, oh Age of Sigmar. Oh Age of Sigmar, yeah, because yeah. this you could use these for a diorama and just say they're in the diorama, but they're very far away. Oh, yeah, that is very true. Depth. You can have them on a you can have them on a hill, have a bit yeah, of force perspective. Way, way back. Yeah. 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 And if you want to force the perspective even more, get a cut out of Jerry and put him on the front. <laughs> Just the looming over the top. But this this uh, you don't even need to look at the rest. As we've been looking through these, I'm fairly sure that Lloyd has been bookmarking every single yeah. one of them. So I don't need to bookmark it. All I need to do is click this section and go bye bye bye. bye. <laughs> how do how do I add this section to basket? <laughs> I want it all. The thing that's been like obviously we talked about them in a historical context and stuff, mm. but when I looked at these, I was reminded of something that I think it was Peter Dennis and the Paper Boys did or mm. are doing, where they're doing that kind of Eastern European the, with the Russ. weird stuff with Russ and things. Things. Yeah, mm-hmm. having these guys out hunting werewolves in Eastern Europe would be awesome. <laughs> that is <laughs> pretty very cool. cool. That's yeah. certainly one way of doing it. Yeah. Who the heck They're... are these? The uh, Sublime uh, Port. Okay, right. Ottoman Empire. Uh, there you yeah, go. Yeah, um, um, you have to. Oh uh, yeah. You have to take the names with a bit of a pinch of salt because the Google Auto Translate uh, takes. Ah uh, right, yeah. Right. Takes liberties. <laughs> Shall we say? In which case, Ottoman Empire is more. Ottoman accurate. Empire is, is yeah. you know, spot on there. Yeah. yeah. 
as you cool. can see, this is a relatively recent batch because they're mm -hmm. still in the greens. Ruben yeah. hasn't yeah. had a chance to work his magic yet, but it's always good to see <laughs> a massive onion hat on people. Of course. Exactly. For that. Yeah. Thank goodness it's in a green. It's going to save me a little bit of money. I'll be waiting until they put up pictures of the Well, they've got oh, some no. painted, so... Oh, yeah, no. Oh, yeah no, no. no. No, it's it's just the current crop at the top are in green. So. <laughs> wow. There's, there's, your, there's, your, there's your second army sorted. <laughs> They're cool, aren't they? Nice that's, splash of colour for this period, yeah. that's the thing. So. And if you want to do your fairly certain Baron Munchausen, uh -huh. is, is set in this era so if you want to you know if you want to go full fantasy and retell Baron Munchausen's uh, spectacular engagements with the Ottoman Turks then you can do that <laughs> oh for goodness sakes this is just epic well I think yeah. you mean for goodness shakes <laughs> uh -oh. not quite right actually but never mind <laughs> oh my lord <laughs> Still good, Benny. It's still good. Thank you. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Moving on, peeps. Is there particular ones you want to look at, or you just want me to troll through? Um. Well, there's not there's not a huge amount in here. Yeah. In the grand scheme of things, if you want to just troll through, because the the artists are probably the next biggest um, set, and they also have mm. some really nice 15 mil scenery in there as well. So even if you're not playing the the carlist uh wars themselves but that could all be stolen for napoleonics yeah 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 I've but they've also got the, the um they look great they've also got some of the other ranges that are sort of uh from other companies as well don't they on their website yeah um so they also do they hold the the license for the corvus belly uh oh. 15 mils uh at the moment only the early imperial roman and celts are on there but they uh oh my god wow they do have them all i mean look we'll, at that we'll have a look at that in a second but yeah that's an amazing piece that's that incredible oh man just see sharp fighting his way down exactly there. yeah <laughs> what's going on here no lloyd shots of the many terrain lloyd shots straight away because <laughs> yeah, whoever Whoever's it's really proud of the gate. I know, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I know what the ass end of a horse looks like. I don't need a Lloyd shot of that. Whereas I don't know what's going on around the back of the cemetery. Yeah, fair. It's mm. nice brickwork they've got done there. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 I say, the, I mean, these, are, if I played 15 mil in the Pudionics, I would definitely be getting these. Yeah, they're gorgeous. Just enough for a little regiment in there. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God, the roofs come off. Oh, that's great. I love that. <laughs> How else would you put your little reb? Exactly. Yeah. This looks like it's even multi-floor. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, joy of joys! So much interactive terrain. Oh. It is. <laughs> yeah. All right, there. That answers the question. So, wow, really lumps of resin there. Yeah. It's tiny. Look at this. I like that though, as an idea. Doing it as like just whole resin pieces that you paint up. That's uh I also like all the damage that's on them as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Well, that's what happens when people start getting antsy with gunpowder based weapons. <laughs> <laughs> Things fall off buildings. Uh, it's a good idea too. You don't have to stick to way back in the time period. You can do your World War Two on there as well. Mm, yeah. Good. yeah. Well, a lot of buildings in Europe are pretty much the same as they were back then, aren't they? So yeah. yeah. Ooh, a laundry shed. Right, I'm going to move us on because <laughs> yes. unless there's something particular. Well, we were going to say, do you want to have a look at the quick look at the Corvus Belli stuff? So they've got the Imperial Romans and the Celts there. So nice. So this is the classic metal stuff that uh, we've also seen Plastic Soldier uh, been producing yeah. as well. So PSC have the license to produce them in um, Ultracast. Ultracast. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but but these are. The uh, metal classics ones, yeah. in metal, lovely, lovely nice. metal, lovely, lovely. And there's also there's a very small section. They also do some NATO uh, eighty six if you want to do your Third World War stuff, mm -hmm. and they have um, Dixie, which is American Civil War, which are both fairly small at the moment. That one of my favourite ones is the little Toot and Tants fantasy set that they do. Mm -hmm. There's not much in there. Where do I go for that? Uh, oh, there there go. Thing. Oh, some skelly bobs. Little Italian wars. They're skeletons. so cool. <laughs> so, you know, there is a bit of fantasy in there. That's brilliant. 
That's neat. Yeah, they're very colourful as well, aren't they? Oh yeah. Yes. Oh well, you have to be. Yeah, uh, that, that was a sign of uh, wealth. There was limits oh. on the amount. There was limits on the amount of. Uh, I can't remember what state brought it in, but only nobles could have so many different colours on their mm -hmm. outfits, That's and then the uh, mercenaries got essentially given a, a carte blanche to skip that so even though they weren't nobles they were allowed to have more colors on their, their oh, outfits cool. than, than <laughs> peasants and merchants could and they took it to a whole <laughs> it's like you, we can wear this you can't wear this You're That's find cool. my tailor <laughs> <laughs> yeah and the great thing is because everybody looks odd you don't have that odd one out moment where everyone's in blue and suddenly you realize you're in red and you, yeah. like, oh, you, you, you can avoid that altogether yeah if we were going into battle or on crusade i would be the first target because i stick out. oh god yeah whereas here nobody sticks out because everybody sticks out yeah, yeah. <laughs> nothing to do with red team at all that doesn't no no, 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 no. nothing that. that's not the reason why you'll die first yeah. <laughs> so this is all the books and stuff down here is it yeah so that's that's the little rule book section so like i say kingdoms yeah. and turkios uh is their own but then baroque pike and shot impetus are, are fairly well known games if you uh fancy playing them that way but regardless of how you play them a fascinating little set of, of miniatures and very much really, so. really good mm. sculpts as well yeah mm. With 15, it's sort of hit and miss. And sometimes the websites, I know I tease Lloyd about his whining about the size of the That's pictures. <laughs> with, with 15s, it can be very difficult to tell what you're but, getting. Um, whereas whereas here you can see right up close I mean, personal how good they are. There's la that last picture that was just there. They've really, they've painted, what is that, picnic print on his trousers and it's 15 mil. <laughs> <laughs> There's yes. no shame on this site. Show your wares, people. Show your wares. <laughs> and then they have a little bit of modern as well. A little bit of modern, just nice. uh, a couple of squads and some vehicles if you're planning on, on doing your Third World War or that sort of thing. I don't Mixing know if this well is... well with all the other ranges out at the moment. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a, a lot of people doing this thing. Mm. So if, if you're keen on seeing what happens when Russia rule over NATO, then, you know... <laughs> The fierce amount of Amex, which I think is the French vehicles. Yeah. Loads of those. Hmm. That's a platoon. But um, it's a, a lit tank. <laughs> That's how they say it clearly. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. No. Definitely. Oh, look at that size of le, that one. The big tank. Le, oh, le, <laughs> le tank grand. There you go. That's it. Done. That's the grand day of tanks for sure. Mm -hmm. Learn French with Ben. Yeah. La petite tank. <laughs> <laughs> and then just last thing I'll look at is the gypsy section. So if you're into your American yeah. Civil War. Yep. Nice. I will look at it. I think, to be honest, for me, Warlord may have tied that up with their new 13.5 mil range. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because yeah. it, it's really coming on. But yeah, definitely. They've got a lot of expansion boxes for that out now. Yeah. yeah, very true. I like these though. Nice detail sculpts on them. them. Similar process to the the stuff we've seen for the other the rather other ranges. So yeah, yeah. If you want to go on more skirmish level, this could probably be a way to go. Well, yeah, because they're not strips. Or, yeah, they're all individuals. Uh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. It's it's very doable. Mm. I like how they've just gone. The infantry are in these clothes mm -hmm. because theoretically the uniforms are very much blended for the north and south so mm. for everyone you find in union navy you'll find probably the exact same uniform in uh, that sort of steel gray that they yeah. South had so yeah. so it's up to you what way you fire them out there mm. awesome stuff really cool wait if you've had the big favorites peeps uh, you know mine i'm straight on on the eastern eagles oh look at that. oh I'll give you one more swish through that. Oh, oh, yeah. Say give us one more swish. Just oh. want to look at it again. There you go. He's, look very, at that. he's very decent that way, isn't he? <laughs> I quite I quite like the like I quite like the look of the Ottoman stuff. I think that's really nice as another sort of alternative faction to go for that's maybe a little yeah. bit different from what other people are doing. Yeah. Is it this one, yeah? Yeah, yeah, the Ottoman stuff. Yeah. 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 So there you go, Ben. That's you tied in. So you have to buy that army this weekend and I can buy this. <laughs> <laughs> that's why it was a bear oh, yeah. <laughs> right peeps anyone else got a favourite 
I, I think just the standard Turkio is is mine. So the same as Ben. I do no. quite like the Asian oh over here. Well. Yes, the yeah. first first ones, of course. Mm, I think I'm joining you with the Eastern Eagles there, Lloyd. Oh, that's it. The well, winter well. Oh, look amazing. <laughs> now you can share the army. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's true. Let's see. Not... <laughs> There's enough here that I can buy half of it, and you can buy the other half, and we still be safe. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. I'm not even mm. going to say it. How do we say this again? Tanto, ten, tento, tans. Totem tans. Totem tans. Tans. Dash miniatures. Dot com. What a stonking end of the week. Mm-hmm. Mm. But it's now time for the news. Coming to you from the center of Northwestern Europe. Covering board games, war games, card games, and all that shit you love. It's the news. <laughs> so starting the off with the news this week, we have some good stuff coming out of uh, Warlord Games. So they have opened up pre-orders for a new starter set that steps away from the Band of Brothers one, which is focused on sort of the European theatre, and instead moves things over to the other side of the world. And uh, the Pacific theatre, a little bit of island hopping between the US, the Americans, and the Japanese forces. Uh, so this is a new starter set, as I was saying, which is called Island Assault, which introduces two big armies, well, reasonably sized armies, for you to use in your games and get started in the, the world of bolt action, which is a pretty damn good one. I should Doesn't say. it? What? Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's about time they made a bigger deal of the Pacific. I think it really gets overlooked all the time. I think it does it mainly because I just don't think it's really there in a lot of the popular culture stuff that's that's done for World War Two. You get, you know, a fair chunk of movies set in that sort of theatre of war, but not as many, I don't think, as sort of Normandy and uh, the, the beach landings and that kind of thing. So I don't get it, though, because the whole terrain side with the jungle warfare and the power yeah. trees and all that sort yeah, of stuff, yeah. to me, looks epic. And from a campaign point of view, you could, like, every weekend you could play with your mates and go island hopping. Exactly. See, yeah. See who that's can take great, one. Move from one to one. Yeah. yeah. Move from yeah. islands because that's just for me. That's more visually interesting than saying, right, I've moved the front of Europe forward a little bit. I literally control this island, and you control that island. Time to fight that's into right, more yeah. fields in Europe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but this set comes with um, so everything in that starter set that you see there is plastic. So you've got well plastic and a few resin pieces with the terrain and things, but we'll mm-hmm. come to that in a bit. So a lot of this stuff is there, as you can see, is plastic. So you've got the plastic kits, which have been out for a while for both the Japanese and the Americans, the USMC. Yep. Uh, and then you've also got two vehicles in there too. So you've got a, a, a Japanese tank there. And then you've also got an American half track, if you want to roll one of those out too, which is pretty nice. Are they the uh, resin ones then? Um, I will have to check. I know that no, they're, they're they're the, trying to make most of it plastic. Yeah, um, the half track is plastic. There yeah. we go. Yeah, um, the wheat. tank will probably be resin. Mm-hmm. It, it most likely is. But then the actual kits themselves, they're fully plastic kits, so you don't have to worry about those. Uh, nice and easy to mix and match and play around with and have fun with. Uh, really nice stuff on that side of things. Uh, as well as the actual um, starter armies is included as part of the Island Assault set, they're also going to be bund- bundling together a bunch of additional support uh, boxes. So you can kind of take Island Assault and then expand into these after you've you know played a couple of games with the, the original starter set. So is this in the set or is this one of the expansions? So everything from or... down from there are the, are the support options that you can get right. in addition to it. So these are all metal, I should add as well. So bear that in mind. Um, So you've got the USMC Raider Squad, which you can see there, um, which was pretty cool. And they were kind of uh, intended to be um, a little bit like the British commandos over in Europe. Um, But it turns out that there wasn't that much opportunity to use them. And so more often than not, they would just fight alongside regular um, sort of line infantry in sort of the island hopping campaigns and things like that. But they were mostly made up of a lot of of veterans and things. So, So they were still pretty badass grizzled squad to use on the tabletop. Uh, and in war, of course. Uh, you've also then got the support squad, uh, and this one is kind of mirrored in the Japanese one, which you'll see later as well. So you're going to get, um, so you've got your NCOs and your leaders. You've also got medics, comms operators. So you've got your radio operators. Then you've got uh, a mortar crew, and then also a machine gun as well. Look at this guy at the bottom left. Exactly. Yeah. We're loving the shirts out this time. Oh no! Are you seeing some things here? Yeah. This guy's not having a great time. No, no. doesn't look like it. No. <laughs> uh, and then you've also oh, got the Japanese more. side oh, of no, things. Yeah, yeah. One. No, that's the same one. Hold on. 
Japanese, here we go. There we go, yeah. yeah. So the Japanese, they've got the Teshin Shudan Paratrooper Squad. Nice. Um, so this is their set of elite troops. And again, a little bit like the Raiders, they weren't entirely used in their sort of uh, intended way during warfare. Um, they were designed uh, as paratroopers, mainly because the Japanese had seen how well the Germans had been doing with them. Yeah. Um, but most of the time when they got dropped over locations, a lot of them were dead before they hit the ground. Um, and then when they did fight, they took such heavy losses that the Japanese decided that it probably wasn't a good idea to do that anymore. That's it. Uh, as a red, as a red shirt, I can totally see where they're coming from. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, Last once again, I was transported. I almost didn't make it. <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting for some particle effects in the edit now. When you do that, so. oh, uh, just, 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 just throw me under the bus there. Exactly. <laughs> can you do that, boy? Can you do that? <laughs> Well, I'm going to have to come back and see if I can materialize myself out of the way. Well, there we go. Uh, we've also got the support squad there for the Japanese as well, which kind of mirrors the, the American one. Uh, so you've got your leader characters in there. You've got your um, your medics. Uh, and then you've got the, the mortar team and another machine gun as well. So if you want to set up things for the Japanese, then you can do that as well. Uh, and, and, and take to the, the battlefields of the Pacific. I will also point out, uh, it's not pictured here in these images, but if you pre-order the starter set from Warlord right now, I think it's going to get released in July, so there's still a little bit of time to go. Um, you get the Cappy the Devil Dog sort of metal miniature that comes with it, uh, and then also the terrain that you saw in the starter set for that is exclusive to that set. So there's like a little pillbox uh, and some other bits and pieces in there too. So if you want to pick those up and use them in your games, they're available in this set for you to, to, to play around with, which is awesome. Yeah. So we should definitely cool. see about getting this on our store as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, I'm sure it will be in the near future. Uh, we, we have uh, an extensive bolt action uh, collection yeah. that you can go and choose from and stuff, and we get orders in for it. So, yeah, if you're interested in bolt action uh, and you want to play some games in the uh, in the Pacific, make sure to check out Island Salt coming up soon. So, Buy some merch! Keep the lights on! <laughs> Wing! <laughs> that energizing stuff costs money, you know. Exactly. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Hi, Faves. What's up next? Next up is uh, Sagani by Funforge. So this is a Ooh. French studio, Funforge, in the game. It's really appreciated. I really appreciate it since I heard the term because I'm quite a zen person. So when somebody tells me on the back of a box of a board game that I can restore balance to nature, it appeals to me. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> players will have control over the elements and that's like fire, air, water and earth. And then you get these adorable little elements take the form of something called spirit. So uh, they're living in our world, not achieving their true form. And it's up to us as players to release them from their current state and into peace. So you're going to need to create patterns with literally those just there uh, by matching up the arrows that are at the sides and creating colour alignments that, uh, mm-hmm. that are on the side of the tiles. So if you look at them, you'll be matching them up to complete different objectives. Um, and once they're all aligned, the objectives are complete and the spirits become better and take the player one step closer to winning. So, so the, what? the game. It's like a spiritual journey then. Yeah, in like, a way. This, You're this helping. It's my like, journey, is it? Yeah. Well, that's, that's your point. So, yes, I guess oh, that is your point. journey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whoever's got the most balance controlled at the end with the colours and arrows between the elements is the person who wins. So I tend to pick my games to determine whether they have both like a competitive and a solo mode because I am a bit of a perfectionist and I, I like to practice a board game before I actually destroy someone in it. That's just how <laughs> I like to go. I don't like to go into a board game and being bad at something. So I do like the yeah. option to have a solo. So well, I was delighted to hear that Garni's got like two solo modes available. So one classic mode that allows the players to play with the same rules as the multiplayer, but in like a solo capacity and like an advanced mode, which is sure to make the harmony of, you know, restoring balance a little bit more stressful cool. for the person playing it. So, uh, but if you do not want to commit to the board game just yet without giving it a go, it is up on Tabletopia at the moment as well, which is Very really nice. good. So it might be worth giving it practice and practicing the game mechanics for when it does come out later this year. Yeah. I'm glad that you said that this brings like a, a balance to the to nature through the use of Zen, mm-hmm. because as soon as you said bringing balance, I was like, oh, Star Wars. The <laughs> and, then, and then I thought, balance. Who else tried to restore balance? <laughs> Thanos did. <laughs> Zen. Zen. Yeah. Certainly not Thanos. Mm-hmm. Not, like not Thanos, yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, up next, peeps, what are we looking at? 
So, yeah, we're moving on uh, to look at some sci-fi stuff now from the guys at Black Sight Studio. Uh, as we've seen from them in the past, they've been doing some really nice uh, sort of cyberpunk sci-fi stuff recently, as well as their kind of horror games and things like that. But the main focus of this latest set of releases is to introduce some possibly quite familiar uh, elements mm. into your games for you to use in games like, I don't know, maybe Stargrave, mm. uh, which is out this week, actually. So, yeah. Uh, some very nice stuff here. They have put together a new set of alien mercenaries. Some of them you may recognize. Maybe a little Star Wars going in there. Maybe a little bit of Fifth Element, perhaps. Maybe. Who knows? Maybe. 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 Uh, Who's this guy back here? You see, he's one of them I couldn't place as long as. He, as he just I, looks like a classic gray. Yeah. With the does. big bug eyes. But he looks familiar. Maybe I'm I've sure had, our community will tell us. Maybe I've had a visitation during the night and I've just buried mm. that thought down below. Ah, uh, was it another transporter malfunction? You got teleported to the Q, <laughs> to Q's realm. <laughs> I love this guy here. Man, if only they could model it and you could move bits, I would totally wiggle his ears. It, yes, it <laughs> yeah, would be he perfect. Was, yeah. He's asking yeah. for it. <laughs> uh, as well as those alien mercenaries, you've also got this new set of kind of like um, post-apocalyptic survivors. Uh, so if you wanted to go a little, do a little bit of vault hunting, perhaps, or if you wanted to just use them as your crew for maybe like a a near future game or post-apocalyptic game and you can play around with these and use them as your player characters these a lot of this stuff is really good for role-playing games i think in particular uh, or skirmish warband games of course as well uh, but they do a really nice selection all of it's in 32 millimeter uh, and all of it is in uh, resin as well uh, nice. and a lot of them are actually just single piece <clears throat> miniatures too which is good um the the third set that i want to take a look at uh well probably be very familiar to a few of you. Uh, so if you wanted to perhaps go hunting for the fifth element with your multi-pass in hand, <laughs> oh, uh, then oh. you can uh, play around with these and then maybe go and re- meet up with uh, with Rubber Rad there as well and have some fun. I think this would be amazing to use as uh, one of the bounty hunter targets in mm. Stargrave. Yeah, make that'd Ruby, be good. Make Ruby Rod just running around the board screaming <laughs> and your team are trying to chase him down. Or, or maybe you're protecting Lilu from attacks from aliens and you're trying to make sure that she gets out of there alive. Uh, but yeah, That's very it. awesome miniatures. But Mr. Mr. Not Corbin didn't have that much hair. No oh, way. Well, yes. <laughs> They've been very generous. Yeah, they have. <laughs> that's, that's probably because they know if at any point Bruce stumbles across this and he was bald, he would lose his mind. Exactly. <laughs> Apparently he's very touchy about his rug. No way. Oh, yeah. <sighs> wow. Uh, and then uh, just to finish things off on the sci-fi front, uh, maybe going in sort of like a little bit more of a cyberpunky direction as well. You've also got a couple of new vehicles. So there's this kind of like um, hovering police bike in the set as well. Uh, but they've also got a couple of other uh, sort of like vehicle options in there too. So really nice stuff, uh, all available in resin uh, for you to go and check out Who's the this? guys at Blacksite. Blacksitestudio.com. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, did, you've teased me now. I want to see the other. Where you can, you can click on their bundle link. There should be like, like a link the to the bundle. There we go. You say there's other the bloody bundle. vehicles. I want to see them. <laughs> there you go. So there's the other vehicle that they've added in. Uh, so yeah, you can oh, throw some uh, sweet. some That's cool. <laughs> some official cars into the mix as well. Official cars. <laughs> <laughs> Man, <laughs> into the mix as well. I I think Fifth Element was always an underrated movie. Fifth I Element. love Fifth Element. It's amazing. You know, it's uh, of course, this isn't Fifth Element. No, no, but, but no, Fifth no. Element was amazing. <laughs> On a side note, <laughs> this would be Sixth Elephant. Yeah, <laughs> Sixth Elephant. Yeah, Sixth Elephant. There you go. Nothing like the original. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on, peeps. Moving on before I slaughter some more news. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I really do miss traveling, and I, I, I miss seeing places in the world that are beautiful. And I've always Very stared true. in awe over the Sydney's Royal Botanic Garden. Do you know that? Have you seen that before? I've, I've never seen it myself, no. No, but obviously due to the nature of the world, I can't exactly visit at the moment. Very so true. there is a board game called The Gardens that has been announced by Growl Games, and mm. you can visit and control the atmosphere of Sydney's Royal Botanic Garden yourself. So oh, without right. visiting Australia and worrying about, you know, being bitten by an enormous spider, <laughs> snake or some kind of abnormally large creature that resides in Australia. Apparently mm. they've got like a severe asthma thing over there as well. With, what like- do you mean? Apparently, they're like I can't remember who was telling me. Didn't they tell you about me. these? Yeah, the yeah, the. They must the, tell me about this. <laughs> yeah, they're they're like storms that will that cause people to die, 
because the, because of asthma. So it whips all of the uh, pollen up into the air. And because it's so turbocharged in the atmosphere, sort of flying around in the storms, it goes into people's lungs and it like takes out like huge sections of city. I mean, what? they don't all die, but they all go to hospital and, and have to get like... Uh, sort, what sort of is Australia? What is uh, it? What even is it? the wind hit you. <laughs> <laughs> See, I always thought, oh, Australia would be a great place to visit. Oh, snakes, no. Oh, spiders, no. Oh, scorpions, no. But now, asthmatics, no. Because I used to be quite asthmatic doing? as a kid. And then I also have a grass pollen sort of thing that, that, that attacks my face. Maybe, so, maybe, maybe don't go to the Royal Botanical no. Gardens and so, instead play this game. Yeah. Be- <laughs> yeah. You know those little black fish you get that you go with your goldfish and they've got the eyes that stick out? Yes. Oh, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes when I'm in a field full of grass, my face will go like that. <laughs> so I'm thinking Australia's off the list. For me. Yeah, I don't think you should visit, in all honesty, no. I'm no. going to have to play this flipping board game too. You are going to have to, because it is beautiful. So the, guard, the game itself uses card drafting mechanics, so to create the stunning landscape. So individually, players are going to build a portion of the garden in front of them using mm-hmm. card drafting system. Right. Adding like lines. Flora. So each bit is like a little... When you say cards, you mean like a deck of cards? Yeah, Yeah. so what you'll do, it does... You'll get a deck of cards where you can build on the cityscape, the grass side, the water side, and it creates the serenity in the botanical garden, which for me is bloody delightful, in my opinion. Mm. I think that is beautiful. So it does look really easy to pick up because it is just using the cards and creating that. Um, It's the main mechanic, but it does provide several different modules for both newbies and experienced board gamers to make it a bit more challenging so the game is set to release at some point this year so i will be keeping my eyes open for the release to enjoy a competitive game that's literally not going to want to make me pull my hair out in stress (laughs) looking at beautiful ponds and flowers and nature in general just to build on one of sydney's most beautiful attractions but you're saying it looks all zen and relaxed and stuff i'm looking at this as someone who's and have pollen <laughs> allergies and I'm looking at this going my god look at the amount of pollen before <laughs> and then look at down around the bottom my goodness it's right in the middle of the city so the air quality is going to be crap as well yeah yeah so this not, is not a appeal horror for you, game though. in disguise <laughs> I, I will say, I will say, Grail Games seem to be doing some really nice stuff recently. Didn't yeah. they? They've done like a revamp um, of fjords, I think, as well, didn't they? Yes, uh, they which have. looks really nice. Yeah. So they've they've probably gone in on that kind of Zen board game thing at the moment, which mm-hmm. I think is really awesome. Yes, so, yeah. absolutely. Right, back to minis, peeps. I think we're going back mm-hmm. to minis, aren't we? We are. Yes. We're heading back to minis and we're going over to see what TT Combat have been getting up to because they have added some new miniatures into the mix for the world of Carnivale. Uh, the guild have got themselves some new reinforcements uh, in the form of some uh, sort of familiar elements and then some that are probably not quite so familiar. Uh, so they've got the Capo de Cine. I'm going to Capo de Cine. I probably I said it wrong, but the <laughs> Capo de Cine. I'm going to go Italian. For you, need to, you need to do this with your hands. Capo de Sina. That's it. That's, that's a perfect it. pronunciation. Yeah. yeah. Totally. No. no. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, the Capo de Sina uh, is a very, very awesome uh, sort of uh, melee fighter for you to use in your guild gang. can also be used as a leader if you want to as well. Uh, has enough uh, sort of points to share around with the rest of your gang so that you can take to the streets uh, and the canals, of course, and do the guild's bidding. Very cool look to it. That is uh, very reminiscent of sort of Assassin's Creed very and that kind Assassin's of aesthetic. Uh, so I very much like it. Uh, and yeah. uh, it'd be really awesome to see people painting this up, I think. It's a bit like Assassin's Creed and Gonzo had a love time. <laughs> <laughs> no trumpet. <laughs> That's what I'm saying here. Yeah. I'd definitely paint him purple. You awesome. would. You'd have to. Yeah. Oh, the person who made that carnival mask for the Kappa to see is like, no. Oh. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah they're have... like, oh, but they're like, yeah, but he's right. That yeah, but he's true. Right. Yeah. Uh, we also have a couple of new unit sets as well that you can use in your, uh, as part of the, uh, the guild. So you've got the barbers here, uh, oh. who they, yeah, they might not look it, but they are pretty damn cutthroat. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Oh. Uh, because they are able to use their razors to sort of get into all the nooks and crannies of armoured individuals and cause them to bleed quite a lot. Um, so they're very good at taking down big hulking figures, yeah. maybe as part of the Vatican, for example. This guy here is probably the one that would kill me. Because there's no way I'd go to this guy and be like, I don't know anything about <laughs> how many hair, what would you know? <laughs> 
This guy looks like a sharp... special way of looking at yeah. life, Floyd. Yeah. 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 Sharp haircut this guy's got. Ah, totally yeah. go to him and then yeah. die. <laughs> I mean, yeah. your man at the back's got a bad back as well. I wouldn't he trust does, him yeah. to take someone yeah. down. He does. How's he going to do you? Do you, do the shaving? Yeah. Uh, you've also got. He's thrown it out, dragging all the bodies away from the chair. Ah, that's it. Yeah. Because he's yeah. not been smart enough to do the whole Sweeney Todd thing where he can just slam on a button and it goes yeah. yeah. down. Yeah. Uh, we've also got a set of the butchers as well. Um, so in contrast Ooh. to the barbers who want to try and sort of take out individual armoured targets, you've got the butchers here that will wade into combats and love being surrounded so they can sort of lay, lay, lay waste around each other with these sort of big mm. cleavers as well. On so the other hand... Wanna... I'd go to either one of these butchers because they look both well fed. That's all. Oh, there you go. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, yeah. They clearly know what they're doing. The, yeah. the one on the right looks not dissimilar to Butcher Bill from <laughs> Gangs of New York. It does a little bit, actually. Yeah. Including a his little hat. bit. It looks bloody just like him. He looks like he <laughs> ate the one from Gangs of New York. <laughs> Oh dear. Is that the most hygienic way to store slabs of meat as well? <laughs> yes, not hanging very them, practical, that is it. Hanging them off you. It's how, it's how you make jerky. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> jerky on the go, you know. Yeah. Hang it there and leave it. Yeah. Walk on. <laughs> Uh, you've also got a set of civilians as well. Um, so they're not exactly the best fighters, but the uh, guild are able to draw on the sort of civilians of um, of, of Venice and use them to their ends. Uh, and so they, the whole idea with these is that you gang them together in big groups and you mob individual targets and just beat the hell out of them. Sounds like, you know, a perfect riot. Fantastic to me. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, some really awesome there, uh, characters there, especially because they're all very different as well. I really like that. I love the guy in the middle. He's got a bit yes. of a belly as well. Yeah. yeah, he obviously goes through his other butchers. He does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and this guy here goes to that barber because I can't see a single hair on his head. <laughs> he's he's <laughs> hidden it because it was such a bad, bad, such a bad, bad job. Because yeah. he went to the old man, that's why. Yeah. Uh, and then finally, uh, and... This is legitimate what release. Dog. We have a set of ostrich racers that you can add into the guild. And I have been uh, informed by TT Combat site that this is actually a legitimate gang that you can play. Um, it is fully legal because mm -hmm. it has your sort of like two basic characters, a trooper and then a leader. Uh, so they're actually broken down into your ostrich racers that a loud ostrich is the other one. <laughs> Uh, and then you have a king ostrich as well. Uh, nice. And the whole deal with them is that they were saved from a shipment that was due to go to the uh, doctors of the Ospedale. So instead of being turned into horrifying monsters, they are now being ridden around the streets and canals of Venice, uh, chasing down people uh, and running them into the canal, probably. Like so, yeah. Bernie Clifton. <laughs> yeah. Him in the, okay. uh, the bottom left's not going to get very far with the chain on his ankle. Exactly. Yeah. It's not going to yeah. get very far. They're sweet and they're scary. I like them, but they yep. do look like Earthworm Jin had his way with a chicken. Yes. Yeah. yes. The painting is very, I should say, striking. I guess. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We've got yeah. Gonzo Assassin's Creed and Earthworm Jin, and what was it? Earthworm Jin and and a chicken. Just a chicken. And a yeah. chicken. Yeah. Just interesting yeah. combos this yeah. way. Everything from TT Combat this week. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. but no really awesome stuff there nice to see the girl getting a, a big boost and hopefully um, TT Combat will be doing some really nice stuff for each of the other factions in uh, the coming months throughout 2021 very cool yep. sweet next we're moving on to a little bit of an announcement for a Kickstarter that's coming out next week on May the 4th be with you uh, so we have Dungeons and Lasers third edition, which is coming to Kickstarter from the folks at Archon Studio. Uh, so you will know the Dungeons and Lasers terrain from stuff we've done in the past. We have shown off their terrain uh, in a multitude of different builds. Warren's using them to build his kind of like dungeon diorama. We've also used it to make the really awesome Hero Quest board that we did a video of uh, a couple of. Well, was it last year? It was last year? No, I can't remember. The last year or so. No, has it wasn't. Been last, the, well, maybe it was, it was last year. Was it last year? All the years have Must blended be. into yeah. each other. <laughs> 2020 is particularly bad for that. Exactly. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was last year. Yeah, because they also ran the Kickstarter last year for the second edition of Dungeons and Lasers. And so this means they've done loads and loads of really nice sets for sort of like your traditional dungeons, nice. dwarven mines, and all sorts of different things like temples. Now they're heading to the place called Woodhaven. And so they've decided, uh, well, to basically make every role playing game as dream, apart from Jerry's, uh, which is to make a fantastic set of terrain that can be used to build the houses, the uh, sort of shops, the barracks, 
the streets and the sewers right. of an entire urban uh, sort of scape, basically, cityscape, so that you can play out your games from the tavern down to the sewers all in oh. one go. Now, the stuff that you get from uh, Archon Studios, part of the Dungeon Lasers and stuff, is incredibly modular. Everything is basically uh, sort of broken up into those individual panels that you can see sort of represented here. Mm -hmm. So you can use them to make uh, sort of huge wall sections or you can make large uh, expanses of open ground. You can also do levels. So you can do, as you can see in this image, and do multi-layered boards to play your games on. So if you if you literally wanted to make the top of a city and then as your friends go off to go and get some drinks or something and have a cup of tea before the next session begins, yeah. lift that up and reveal the sewer underneath. I mean, I, that sounds pretty awesome. To it me. is pretty yeah. cool. Who wouldn't think that was cool? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> need miniatures for an RPG. Do look great for a skirmish game, although I wouldn't get yes. in that bed. <laughs> no, I noticed that bed as well. Oh, man. oh this oh, bed. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's someone looking at you all the time as well. If you get past the mouth, you know. That's true. That bed's given the one from Hellraiser a run for Ed's money. <laughs> I, I was just going to say, I was waiting for um, uh, Watch His Chops, uh, Jack Sparrow, to get eaten and sprayed all over the ceiling. Uh, but, yeah. what? No one seen that movie? No? Night Nightmare oh. on Elm Street? Johnny Depp getting eaten by the bed and sprayed all over the wall? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's in that, isn't he? Yes. I remembered his name halfway through my sentence. That was great. Um, so, yeah, oh, as well. Uh, coming to Kickstarter then. So, so yeah, the terrain so, bits and the minis. Yes. So, uh, they're going to be doing all the new Woodhaven stuff. So, you'll be able to buy all of the building pieces, mm -hmm. all of the streets, all the things to make the barracks and the shops. And, and then you'll also get all of the things that you find inside those buildings. So, the beds and the mimics and the nice. tables and chairs. Giant detail. Plus... Things. You'll be able to get, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Plus, you'll also be able to get all of the old stuff, and they're also working on 60-plus miniatures for this as well to represent all the different townsfolk. So you'll have your town guard, which you will invariably end up running away from. Uh, you'll have rogues and shopkeeps and kids and all sorts of different things for you to throw into your games. As you can see there, there's just some of them represented. Uh, but, yeah. Really awesome stuff. Perfect for those that are maybe diving in and want to have that really nice interactive tabletop for games like D&D &D and Pathfinder and such, especially because the actual tiles themselves, it's kind of hidden, I guess, when you look at them, but they are kind of like gridded up as well so that you can use them for proper tactical yeah. movement of miniatures and stuff, which is cool. Uh, and as Jerry was saying, you don't have to use these for... Uh, for role-playing games you can use them for skirmish games because yeah. they do a lot of stuff that could be mixed and matched to things like uh, Frostgrave for example as well so. Are the minis coming in plastic then? Yeah so everything will be in the same plastic uh, that Brilliant. you get uh, the, um, the, the the building materials in for this so Ooh. yeah and as I say all modular so you can build it up and keep it as one thing if you want or you can build it in sections and then put it all together depending on on how you like to use your terrain so should be very cool to see how it all comes together and uh, i'm sure we'll we'll have another look at it uh soon and sort of like take a look at all the different pledges and stuff but yeah very cool sweet mm -hmm. wrapping us up for the news then peeps mm -hmm. what do we got for our last bit so for our last bit of news are you ready to rock oh i am ready Oh, well, there we go. That's, that's, yeah. Apparently, I'm not ready to rock because I thought this was rocking on Discord. I've been using this on Discord for about six months going, rock on! <laughs> in actual fact, it means call me! <laughs> call me now! Yeah, but apparently, the new symbol for calling someone isn't this anymore. It's this. And the that, same for camera. The this? This and something. apparently, for a camera, it's not this anymore. It's this. Because nobody clicks with the camera. Up. I know it is. You don't tell it is, that, is that camera? It's the camera. You know, when you, you take a picture, it's not because okay. nobody clicks with a picture anymore. This is what? Not, and the phone, phone is like that. That's, just, yeah. that's phone me. I don't, apparently, that's phone. Apparently. That's not a young phone. Enough to, that's <laughs> a phone. But no one's old enough now that they use all of these little symbols. To I've know even got one of those flip like phones. Look, look, I, I look forward to the day when oh. they change the save symbol <laughs> away from the screen. Oh, like yeah. 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 Oh, man. But anyway, the future sounds boring because <laughs> everything, these... everything's just going to be some sort of trying to make your hand look like your mobile phone in some way. Very true. Yeah. Well, there we go. There's the thumbnail. Um, but yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> as well as, uh, well, what was I going to say? Yes. Speaking of things that are cool and we are ready to rock now. Yeah, we have some really new... your new millennial flipping symbols. They're not cool at all. Of course. No, no, they're not yeah. cool. But we have some new releases from the folks at Artel Miniatures. 
Now, they do amazing orcs. And some people might remember the Goth Rockers from mm -hmm. Warhammer of Old. Well, these are the new boys on the block. In fact, they are da boys. Da boys. <laughs> da boys. Uh, and this is a new badass resin set in 28 mil for uh, you to paint up uh, and get stuck into. And I think this looks amazing. Um, again, the, the sculpting on these is just phenomenal. I, I just love how much character is, is, is sort of baked into them. And the casts themselves, when you look at them, the, like the resin finish is fantastic. Like, I love how smooth everything is, and you've got those really nice defined lines yeah. and everything. It means that me, as a, I, I'd say, fairly distinctly average painter, would have a very nice time with these and, and, and get on well. I also like that you can paint them in a bunch of different ways because they're rockers, but you could paint them as rockers and, like, metalheads from throughout the spectrum of music. Oh, you could do them in a proper punk style. You could do them as traditional rockers. You could do them in kind of, like, new metal, sort of emo, goth, based on the, you know, style of music you like. Do them as proper Guns and Roses. You've got Lash but. there, for example, yeah. Uh, so just dive in and have fun with these, and I think they would be a fantastic diorama. Or even just unit champions, maybe, for you to use in your <laughs> games. Uh, fantastic stuff. Yeah. <laughs> like how he's using a potato masher and a I mean, I dynamite just, for those drums. Yeah, I was just looking at what they were, yeah. And uh, one of the guitarists has got a rocket attached to the end of his guitar, which well, is fantastic. Yeah. And the actual uh, front talk, as he's called, can either do the uh, sort of metal cymbals, the horns, uh, or he can uh, have a like a power claw. So that's the symbol in the emoticons for power claw. Uh, yeah, so can he do... <laughs> Phone me. <laughs> Can you call me? Can you call? Sure, the international symbol for Lego hand. <laughs> Who knows? And I've just noticed that this My is not our, this is not our last bit of news. It isn't. No. no. Well, it kind of no. is, and it kind of is. It's our last interesting bit of news. Yes. <laughs> because our next bit of news has nothing interesting until next week when it actually well, happens. True. Yes. <laughs> but yeah. So if you, if you want to get your hands on the on the, on the boys, they're available now to uh, to go and pick up from their web store. So go and check them out. Really fantastic, especially if you're an orc fan, uh, uh, which I know a lot of people are. Um, but yes, the last little tiny bit of news is that Games Workshop, while taking their hiatus, where they've basically not been releasing anything over the last couple of weeks, are going to be doing Warhammer Fest 2021 next week, starting on Monday. So instead of just condensing Warhammer Fest down into two days, they decided there was too much to tell us. And so they are going to be spreading things out over Monday through to Saturday. I'm talking about all the different games and what is coming up for them. Will we hear about Curse City? Probably not. But anyway, mm -hmm. uh, there is plenty of things to dive into and enjoy for this. Well, maybe on Saturday because it says it's a mystery. Oh. Well, yeah. <laughs> maybe true. they got the Scooby Doo license, and that's why it says it's a mystery. <laughs> Scooby Doo. They've been watching the yeah. what Warren's been doing and thinking, actually, we're really messing out. We need the Scooby Doo <laughs> license. Mm -hmm. We could make a mint. Mm -hmm. There you go. I mean, Next Warren week, has designed the game. So. Yeah. Scooby Doo is being released from Games Workshop. You heard it here first. Your <laughs> best source of news for miniature gaming and all things tabletop love. Now let's move on and look at what's happening in the world of 3D. So we are back with 3D printing is the shears. And yes, we are looking at uh, another Patreon and my mini factory combination that you can go and check out right now. Uh, so this week, we're going to be looking at Battle Yak Miniatures, uh, which is a pretty awesome name in of itself. Uh, but it's run by one John Golden Yakimo or Golden Yak. As he's, uh, as he's called. Uh, and these are some fantastic 3D printables that you can uh, snag for yourself and print off at home. So very much like um, a lot of uh, 3D printing Patreons and, and my mini factory uh, bundles and stuff like that, over the last couple of years, everything is kind of broken down into um, sort of smaller collections. And each of these collections is usually then themed around something in particular. So, for example, we're looking at things to do with the Harrow Haunt at the moment. So this was a lot of more spooky creatures and things that you can use in your games. Uh, again, these are very much use useful across a myriad of different fantasy and pulpy games out there. So I'm sure you will find a use for them, whatever you do. Um, the thing that I quite liked about them is the actual sort of uh, general aesthetic of the range. Uh, like I, I really like this sculpting style in particular because it very much falls into that kind of wheelhouse as slightly over the top World of Warcraft-esque 
looking fantasy creations where proportions are not a thing. <laughs> so you have huge heads and uh, and arms and hands and all kind of things like that. So you can basically just go to town with them and have a lot of fun when it comes to uh, uh, printing them and painting them. Um, the other thing I quite like about a lot of the stuff that we've seen from Battle Yak is that you've got that really nice selection of sort of options within those things. So you don't just have sort of like the same thing over and over again. You can sort of mix and match as you like. Yes. It is they a are. massive cake. Wow. A mimic cake in particular. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's a crab cake. Yeah. Hey. Hey. I get it. There we go. Yeah. You don't need to get it. It literally is a crab it cake. Is, yeah. I know. I know. <laughs> it's I like crabs. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Crabs, what? <Yeah. laughs> uh, but yeah, so uh, as I say, the Patreon's been up for a quite a long time, and the sort of focus, as I say, has, has been trying to create miniatures that are kind of built into that aesthetic, that are kind of inspired by a lot of video game content. So, uh, some of the influences that um, Golden Yak has talked about are things like I said, World of Warcraft, uh, but sort of Darkest Dungeon and Dark Siders, especially Dark Siders, if you think of kind of like the you know huge shoulder pads and big weapons and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Bit of Warhammer, bit of D and D in there, as we saw from the mimics, and then there's also that nice dose of like Arkham Horror Cthulhu esque stuff in there too, which yeah. I think is really nice. Uh, so it all comes together to create a really good um, set of miniatures, as you can see looking through these. Help, yes, help! Man. My night's on fire. <laughs> Obviously, bed knobs and broomsticks inspired. Oh yeah. <laughs> The Angela Lansbury inspirational. <laughs> I'll be going along. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm particularly drawn to, I think it's the next of the sets, uh, which I think is these ones, yeah, the Clan Wizard Skitter Kin. Wizard. Uh, which are perfect for those who like ratty uh, kind of uh, creatures and stuff for your games. Um, and I like that because of the kind of theme that has been built up around sort of the Skaven from Warhammer, you can get around, you can get away with technological stuff that would kind of not necessarily normally fit into a fantasy world, and then also use it in sci-fi and, and all that kind of thing as well. And you see the same thing with the Veermen as well. So if you wanted to make a, a slightly more bespoke force for a game like uh, like like Warpath or Dead Zone, you can easily do that as well, which is really cool. Uh, but yeah, some stunning miniatures, as you can see from the collection uh, and uh, there's plenty to choose from uh, I'm sure we'll get to some of them soon but there's actually like badass shark people which are very cool <laughs> shark people <laughs> who wouldn't want shark men well let's see because I just opened basically the top line there so is there any particular Where the sharks shark? are oh, it's sharks are one of the shark first circus. ones they were really shark there. circus yeah. I mean a hammerhead shark zerka Cool I love how he's wielding another shark's bones on his shoulder, the teeth. Yeah. Like, yeah. that's fab. You know, it's a shark-eat-shark -shark world. <laughs> 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 they are different, though. I'll give they are nice. different. That's not I, something you often see. I also like that they, like that guy... I'm hmm. fairly sure is inspired by Street Sharks, <laughs> uh, which it, which is a '90s TV show that I hope many people have seen. But uh, this is um, why you always want a Lloyd shot because from here we would have no idea that he still has a shark's arse. And he's now still got he's still <laughs> there we go. Shark arse. It must be awkward yeah. to sit down, isn't it? I just have horrible okay. visions of goldfish swimming along with dangly bits. <laughs> <laughs> I know people have goldfish tanks. They're just not relaxing when goldfish go to the toilet. It takes about three days for it to finally drop off. There's no relaxation to be had. Can't look at it for three days. Very That's awesome. Yeah. So especially like um I mean, I know in the world of darkness you've got Rokea, who are big badass shark people. Mm. I mean, admittedly, these are slightly more fantasy based, but you could easily come up with a really cool fantasy. Um, uh, even fantasy just using them, uses. even just using them in place of orcs in a game. Yeah, or or Goliaths maybe as well. Going yeah. down that route, maybe you could do something like that. It would, would be really fun. I like the fact that there's too. yeah, I was going to say the Bye. theme bases because even with the um, crab cake, they had. Frosted topping with sprinkles bases. <laughs> That's cool. Mm -hmm. I think I think sort of um, scenic bases and sort of unique bases for these is a good idea as well because they you're, they're producing such a odd range of miniatures mm -hmm. for the most part. Yeah. So having bespoke bases for them, I think, kind of completes the look rather than going for something traditional. I suppose you'd say. Uh, on yeah. the bases side of things, let's see. We've got a specific. Whole range oh, there's of the frosting on. one. Yeah. 
Where is it? Oh, there we go. Yeah, with the see spring delicious frosting. That's cool. <laughs> Hundreds of thousands all over it. Yeah. But no, I mean, it, it, in this case, even if you want to just pick up some custom bases for your miniatures, also not a, a bad idea. I love that. Imagine I love those. if I'd taken those stuffed fables miniatures I did, you know, oh, yeah. wow. and put those on the little cake bases. Yeah, that's been, brilliant. And kept your amazing splat effect. Would have been awesome. <laughs> God. I used to call oh, them it. custard bases. Oh, I love God. them. Right? Yeah. You're on fire today. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. No, uh, really, really cool stuff. Uh, the Night Hall in particular, I think, could be really cool if you're going to try and do something a little bit we a little bit woo with the mm-hmm. Night Haunt from Age of Sigma. Obviously, just taking a little bit of a different take on it all. Yeah. Um, I also think that a lot of this stuff, pardon me, would be quite nice <laughs> built in alongside stuff from like Legend of Signum and the Signum game range because mm. a few of these pieces have got slightly more of that kind of confrontation vibe to them, which I think is yeah. really cool. Uh, so you could do some nice stuff. That'd look really nice as glass. That yes, you could use it for superheroes. Yeah, you know, oh, cause... superhero landings. Oh, yeah. that's good. Call put the fist in the in the shatter zone. Yeah. Oh yeah. man, Mr. Bond. Yeah, very clever. <laughs> yeah. They have a really nice set of um, orcs and doom slash not doom minis as well. They do, which are yeah. worth having a butcher's up. Where do I go? Uh, if you oh, scroll if down, you, are, are you on the <laughs> main page? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Scroll down. Oh, so much. There is oh, so much. Yes. After after the icy, keep going. Go That's all their go. winter oh, stuff that oh, they did. Oh, that. Oh. Oh, all these goblins getting opened as well. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh that's amazing. That's getting oh. <laughs> you know how Stay I was looking for big, You know how I was looking for big badass beasts to use in my games? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, I can, yeah. maybe oh. I can tweak things slightly. Dynasty Null. I love Look that name. Wings. We'll, we'll have to come back to it. Where are we going? Is it, no, no you're, you're almost there. Just a little bit further. Oh, Got he this. gets opened as well on the way. <laughs> these tree people? They're pretty cool. Or the three people there. there we go. Now we head the goblins and into the orc section, which That's is... Scumgrot Sky, Sky Raiders. Which yeah. is comprehensive. <laughs> if you go to the fourth line along and and then just drop down there, you will hit the Doom... I don't know if Doom Guy has a name. Does he have a name? He's Doom Guy. Doom guy. All right. Doom. I have no idea where I'm going. No, just keep going down. Oh, we're on there. Yeah, there we go. There we are. It was mostly, I knew if you were on that line, I knew you couldn't miss it. And the orc beside him, the war boss, who is very Warcrafty. Iron Scar, the war grunt. Yeah, mm. very cool. Yeah. Oh, that's not him. <laughs> nah, <laughs> he was not over him. Here. There he He'll is. Wow. Away. Yeah. Loktaroga. Yeah. It's good to see how they print as well. Horde film. Yes. Yeah. That's nice to say. Should be a 360. Oh. Oh. Oh, of the base. Wow. <laughs> Wait, I think yeah, you can yeah. see the individual components as well. So that's, that's nice. Fancy, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. You can live out your fantasy of seeing everything in Lloyd shots. That's, that's, that's <laughs> it. Look at this thing. We're going to go back. Now we can look at all the things that Lloyd picked out. Look at this. Why wouldn't you want that? Oh, he is really cool. He is really he is cool. I cool. oh, love him. That's cool. What's the present about? Is it Krampus kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. No, I think that yeah. was to say he did run Christmas. Yeah. Oh, oh. It comes with cool room weapons. Guy. Forget all well. that. It comes with a toy train. Look at that. <laughs> Don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these are really whimsical. They are dying to be painted in like bright blue yeah. or something. <laughs> They're great. Yeah. I yeah, love the idea of a D and D campaign where all these goblins have been sort of like, yes. uh, like shy hang, sh- shanghai into I like a shy hanged <laughs> into uh, a new Marvel villain. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> these into, guys have their noses coming out of their foreheads. Oh wait! I don't isn't think that, really isn't, that isn't that hair? Like oh, that might be a tuft of hair. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that makes more That'd sense. <laughs> I was like, no way. I was like, mm. this is Gonzo gone wrong. <laughs> <laughs> We've had enough Gonzo for the day already. Mm. Yeah, that would if you be paint adorable. them blue, they would look like the ones from Galaxy Quest. Just <laughs> yes. like savage. Yeah. yeah. They're great looking, though. They're brilliant. That's what Santa Claus really looks like. There you go. Yeah. Well, we know right. that. Douglas. What do you want to look at? Can I wrap this up, peeps? You want to look at some not Space Marine type stuff? Did, did you ever open Doom Guy? I don't know where Doom Guy is. I didn't see him. He was on that line. There he is. Where? 
You're, you're, you're literally that. hovering over him. Right. You've now you've moved away. And again. Where? And again. One more. There the you Sentinels go. of Primus Slayer. Yeah. That it doesn't one. say Doom Guy anywhere. Oh, <laughs> I understand Doom, what you mean. It's the Doom, say, Doom Slayer. Ah, yeah, so. I get it. I was literally looking for something that said Doom Guy. There we go. <laughs> Ooh. Very cool. Although, if you can have a giant demon head, why would you not have a giant demon head? Exactly. exactly. You can put this on, or I can give him a knife. No. Uh, no, I'll have, I'll have the huge head, please. Oh, look, Doom, Doom Guy's just uh, uh, killed a demon. Oh, he's he, he's not putting that down. He's going to carry that around with him into every <laughs> battle. <laughs> I killed this. <laughs> Is this your friend? Also, oh, so, you can use it as a shield. So they're not, not space marines. They're more not, not Doom people. They're Doom like guys. a mix of the Praetor suits from, D, uh, from Doom and the Primaris space marines. Yeah. Yep. Which means they're massively big then. Mm. They've just I also, been inflated. I wouldn't be keen on this. Why would you paint a target on your head? <laughs> <laughs> no. I assume it's for when you're headbutting demons. Yeah. <laughs> Every headbutt burns. Yeah. Thinking about demons. What's this? Go away. It's the eleventh core Intel Gen <laughs> platform things. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that that's creepy fire. Mm. Very nice. That is cool. Mm. Uh, but yeah, so as long as well as the uh, my mini factory, which you can see oh. here that we've been looking through, they yeah. also have a Patreon page as well. But uh, before we do that, Ben, let's go back to the not necrons because there's definitely some okay. not necrons up here. Somewhere. Not necrons. <laughs> look at these. These look swish. Oh, that's a not necron. Yeah, and they got some beefy not necrons up here. Look. Was that a full set above? I, yeah. th I think they do them as full sets as well as just individual packs as well. Yeah. Where's that? Yeah, oh, yeah, that'd be a better yeah, thing then. Because I could just see the whole lot. Oh, 50% off. You could do the whole pack. Wow. <laughs> Justin, we've got things for you to print now. <laughs> <laughs> They're pretty cool, aren't they? Mm. Again, nice to see like a little bit of a variant on sort of. Oh, how uh, very. I uh... tried and tested set. Oh, who'd you call him? The cool. dude. Mm -hmm. Spanish. Director. The Hellboy dude. Yes. Oh, Guillermo del Toro. Guillermo del Toro, Toro. yes. Yeah. Which is a very different way to take it. Mm. I, I kind of like it. If yeah. I was going to do nice. like, yeah. Steel Warriors, I might be tempted to go that route mm. just to be awkward and different. <laughs> <laughs> and like, as you can see, like they've been doing it for a really long time. Well, he's been doing it for a really long time. Um, so there's plenty for you to choose from, and there's clearly a lot of expertise here in terms of uh, the, the different 3D sculpts that are on offer. Um, and because of that Patreon that I mentioned as well, you've got that kind of community built up behind it too. So if you want to dive in and, and sign up per month instead of just buying the miniatures wholesale like this, you can also do that. Yeah, so, so their Patreon is... Patreon forward slash Battle Yak Minutes. Battle Yak, yeah. Uh, and... As per normal, you sign up and each month you'll be able to get yourself a bundle of awesome miniatures. There'll probably be a few extras here and there for those that back on the Patreon rather than just buying it through Mini Factory. So if you're interested, go and check that out and uh, let us know what you think of Battle Yak. It'll be cool to hear if anyone's actually um, worked on their stuff before because I know they've been yeah. doing it for a while. So uh, it'd be nice to, um, to, uh, to see some work and some painted miniatures as well if you've got them out there. Yeah. Sweet. Sweet. Did you win one of our prizes? Find out on our prize claim center over at ontabletop.com. Here we list all our previous prizes and those who have won. If you see your username, fill out the form to claim your prize. All prizes must be claimed within 30 days. Right, peeps, let's see what we're doing Kickstarter-wise this week. Kickstarter-wise, uh, we've got a few of them. So uh, we're starting off with Cyberpunk Red Combat Zone. Uh, so this is from the folks at Monster Fight Club. Uh, so people will know Monster Fight Club uh, have been doing uh, projects in the past. You're not or... supposed to talk about Monster Fight Club. Oh, <laughs> I was like, what? Oh, yeah, 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 of course, yeah, yeah. What's the first, first rule of Monster first Fight Club? First rule of Monster Fight Club. It's, the whole advertising campaign has been very poor. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't really think this one through. Uh, anyway. Well, I'm going to break all the rules uh, and say that Monster Fight Club have been doing some cool stuff on Kickstarter before. They've done some really nice sort of like uh, big 3D plastic terrain. Mm. But they're also doing the miniatures collection 
or the Cyberpunk Red role-playing game by uh, mm. Talsorian Games. Uh, but because they've also been making all these miniatures, they decided, why don't we make a skirmish game? Uh, and so they have put together this campaign to bring Combat Zone and the first starter set to life on the tabletop. So if you haven't got enough Cyberpunk in your role-playing, or if you manage to get it to work on your console or PC, you can uh, <laughs> now dive in and play it in a skirmish game format as well. Uh, not to, to to wreck on CD Projekt Red, but there we go. Um, <laughs> uh, there are two sets included in the core set. So you've got, well, two gangs, sorry. So you've got the Tiger Claws and the Maelstrom. All of the miniatures that you get are made of their high-quality plastic, and most of them, if not all of them, are one piece. So you just get them, pop them out of the set, and get going on the tabletop, which is very cool indeed. In addition to the two gangs you also get a selection of cardboard sort of paper style terrain as you can see there uh, and also all the gubbins dice tokens cards and other things that you'll need in order to play the game is the game board neoprene or is it like a i think it's a board board i believe so, oh, yeah. oh. yes um but um the actual game itself um there's no sort of like uh demo videos and stuff at the moment but they have said that they're going to be opening their beta quite soon but it's based on what's called their reaction system uh so re is slightly sort of um uh, sort of segmented off uh, and that's mainly due to the way in which the sort of like mechanics of a turn flow um so action to take in based on the dice colors in the top of each character's card uh you reuse those dice in order to do your actions and if you succeed or fail uh when you take damage the dice that you use in order to take actions goes down, so you get to go through the whole suite of polyhedrals, or well, more or less. Uh, and the more damaged you are, the smaller the dice is, and the less chance of you may be able to do something. However, they've also thrown in something that I'm sure a lot of people will be familiar with if you've played games like Infinity, which is called the react part of a turn. So when you get shot, you don't just get shot. You have the chance to do something in reaction to it, so you can spend uh, sort yeah, of like, like your, die. Like die. That yeah. would be my reaction. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, so you could die like Lloyd, or you could be like, I'm going to go and get you. And you could charge at them, try and beat them to death with a, you know, a lead pipe, or you could shoot them, or you could die for cover and all that kind of thing. That's well. you trying to be really super cool. Yes. I'm I'll not just... going to die. I'm going to be super cool like my brother. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to run forward with my lead pipe and hit something. <laughs> I want to be in a band. <laughs> oh, for anybody who doesn't know, Ben has a super cool brother who's in a rock band. He Ben's is, cool man. enough, all right? Yeah. Ben's cool. I didn't say Ben wasn't cool. It's just his brother's uber cool because he's in a rock band. He's been on the radio and everything. That's great. Yeah. On the radio and everything. Yeah. And here's oh, you. Well, well, well. Just yeah. on a YouTube channel every I know. Week. It's not like That's I'm here cold. all the time. Like, yeah. Talking about little men. Where people can <laughs> see your face and not just exactly. hear your lovely voice. Yeah. So who's cooler in the end? Who's cooler? I'm better than the bassist. Yeah. Did you, <laughs> did, you call, <laughs> did you call up your brother when he was on the radio? Huh? No. Call him. No. Call him. Yeah. Very good. Like yeah. our hand. But anyway, go stepping away from my my childhood pain. Uh, we have uh, uh, some more stuff on the sort of game mechanics there. Sorry. Uh, so there's this thing called the limiter. Um, so based on the sort of uh, the state of your character and what you want to do in a turn, you sort of have different limits of abilities tied into like green, yellow, and red. Yeah. And so when you take those, you have to bear those in mind. So it's kind of like got like a little bit of a, like a resource management element to it as well, which I think is really nice. But I, I just love the idea that it's kind of got that react mechanic to things. So the game sort of begins and then it's just flows before it gets to the end rather than just being like segmented terms and things, which I think is really good. In addition to kind of just being able to play one-off games, you can also dive in and play for like full campaigns. So they've got loads of really cool scenario cards that allow you to play out individual scenarios that will link to each other and you can tell a little bit of a cyberpunk story. So you've got that role-playing element going in there too. Yes. In addition to that... Uh, they've also got a bunch of other gangs that are available as part of this Kickstarter. So you've got the Bozos, the Combat Zoners, the Gen Red, who are a bunch of kind of like um, street kids, which I think is really cool. And then you've also got Lawmen as well to play around with. All of them, as I say, available in plastic. Uh, they've also said that they're going to be doing some more stuff, bringing in the additional range of miniatures, so all the different hero characters and that kind of thing, if you want to use them in your games as NPCs or maybe additions to your gangs. And they also, uh, being Monster Fight Club, have lots of terrain for you to draw from as well. Uh, so you can mix that in at the same time. Um, Sweet. Looks really cool. Uh, I, I am all for cyberpunk stuff. 
so hopefully we get to see a lot more of the gameplay and uh, and see how it all plays out and uh, look at that maybe cow. give it a go ourselves yeah in the future. So, look at the cow that's yeah. pretty cool strontium cow <laughs> yeah. i mean we're only halfway through exactly we're going. Yeah. there's loads yeah. to this isn't there yeah uh, it's a, a very cool, very cool uh, premise, I think, uh, especially because I, I love that they've gone for that kind of cyberpunk red setting. Um, so they've kind of gone for that idea that kind of like everything kind of went to pot, uh, but things are starting to like come back up. But that doesn't that means that there's not like full control over lots of the streets and that kind of thing. So you could play around with that element and the way that the gang is fighting for control of territory uh, and, you know. You don't have to set things in Night City. You could move them off into different areas of the world and play out games elsewhere if you wished as well, which is really cool. So, yeah. Sweet. I like the fact that they've pretty much pulled together a whole starter set. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right. Uh, there's more. I can't keep going. There's more. Look, there's more. Well, well, they, you see, those are the those are the different sets you can see there, uh, which uh, sort of break down what's available. The Bozers have got that kind of like street carnival uh, sort of Joker vibe going on. Um, as yeah, that's cool. Yeah, sort of Mad Hatter style, combat zoners, uh, sort of like your average drug dealers and street thugs that you want to throw into the mix. Classic. Uh, Gen Red, as I was saying, who are the kind of like street urchins, which I think are really cool. Yeah. Um, I love the I idea like of playing it. a game as them. I think it'd be really neat. I like uh, their drones. Yeah, yeah. I think well, that's when quite... you're a kid and you're going up against a super powered. Uh, cyber psycho, I think you need something to stop you from dying immediately. A couple of robot crabs is the way to do it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, combat, uh, Cyberpunk Red Combat Zone got uh, 13 days left on the campaign as you see this, fully funded as it stands. Uh, go and check it out. And obviously, down to just play Combat Zone, you can play Cyberpunk Red with it as well. So yeah. Cool. Sweet. Moving on then, peeps. We've got another couple of Kickstarters to get through. We but do. Look at it. We do. So <laughs> next up. This week. Yeah. Next up, we're heading to uh, the realm of Mike Mignola's Hellboy and that wonderful artwork. Oh, lovely. And going to Hellboy the board game from Mantic Games as they have not one, not two, not three, but four expansions and a dice game available for you to go and check out. Uh, so uh, you will obviously need the core Hellboy board game to play these. Goes without saying. <laughs> but this is a, a new collaboration between Mantic Games and Needy Cat, who do the game design on these, to bring four new expansion sets to the tabletop for you to play. So you've got the Storm and the Fury, uh, where Hellboy has managed to get his hands on a mythical sword. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Um, and he's going to be taking on Nimue in her dragon form, which is the biggest miniature that Mantic have done for Hellboy so far. Very awesome indeed. You've also got Hell on Earth, where you'll face even more random and unique enemies uh, drawn from sort of like the BPRD sort of archives and that kind of side of things. So if you want to throw in lots of randomness and new monsters, you can do that. You've got Pandemonium, which has four new bosses taken from uh, sort of extra dimensional planes and that kind of thing for you to use in your games. And then finally, you've got End of Days, because if you're going to be fighting all these different enemies, you may need some new heroes. So you'll be able to bring Ted Howard's Sledgehammer, the evolved Abe Sapien, and Flaming Liz Sherman, which I had to say in like a Flaming Liz Sherman style when I first Flamin saw Mo. that. Yeah, <laughs> Flaming Moe's. <laughs> uh, so yeah, really cool stuff. Uh, lots of just nice new cases for you to dive into and have fun with, especially if you've managed to go through all of the ones in the original Hellboy set and the Kickstarters and uh, Kickstarter stuff and the expansions and all that kind of thing as well. Um, so yeah. I, I, I've thoroughly enjoyed playing a little bit of Hellboy um, every so often. Uh, my friends got the Kickstarter from the first time they did it, uh, and it was really good fun. Really enjoyed it. Nice mechanics, cool miniatures. Probably some of the best I think they've done, next to kind of like the Walking Dead stuff, I think. Um, I've yeah. miniatures, yeah. Plastic. No. Plastic. Plastic. Yeah. yeah. And they, they are really nice. Like, I love the detail in the the stuff they've done for Hellboy. Uh, it draws very much, obviously, from that kind of the art style and stuff of the co of the comic books and the graphic novels, which is which is always good to see. Um, in addition to the expansions, there's also a new dice game that's been added on. Uh, so the dice game uh, is a quick and easy sort of push your luck style game using dice from the uh, the core game, which I think is a really nice sort of like add on. Yeah, it's there. Nice um, and it's kind of like you're playing as BPRD agents, exploring a strange location, and you're trying to delve as deep as you can to take on the different threats before you get torn apart by the darkness and all the monsters that hide in it. Because without Hellboy, you're probably dead. 
but that's okay. That's in the video. Ooh. You can watch it and find out. (laughs) Frogmonster, Rasputin. But yeah, this is giving you just a look at what was available previously and that kind of thing. So this stuff's not new, is it? No. No, No, that that stuff was all from before. This is new. Ron Perlman made a pretty good Hellboy, didn't he? I loved Ron Perlman. I love Ron Perlman as Hellboy. Uh, I still really like the first. Well, I like. The, the two movies that they did. I'm not such a fan of the remake kind of reboot. With Hopper. They, yeah. I mean, it was, it was okay, but I just didn't think it like it had like a soul to it, which is a shame. It wasn't, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I agree. But I really like the, uh, well, both Golden Army and the original Hellboy. I think mm-hmm. they're really cool. Uh, I have them both on DVD because I'm old. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. But unfortunately, Hellboy doesn't age, does he? It no, does. He does very very slowly. You can get kid Hellboy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Nut, did he not? But yeah. so, but so he grew up and then he kept aging, but just very slowly. So he yeah. grew up fast and then slowed down. Yeah, like uh, deer. Because <laughs> my favorite, my favorite Hellboy would be like I have to think like a really old grandpa version of Hellboy. And I'm thinking like, because every time I look at Hellboy, I see Ted Danson, and Ted Danson's like. Right. A bit, like a million years old now and he would yeah. make an awesome grandpa sort of hellboy but they I guess he has the face structure shape of his face yeah. that's it yeah he's got the kind of like the like big thick jaw going on yeah. and he's got yeah. the massively receding hairline yeah as well yeah. Right. make up all they have to do is disc and airbrush and spray him red yeah. and go spray him red and away you go we're done oh. You're a hellboy. hellboy. You're wrinkly. <laughs> you look like hellboy, and now you're red. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> How many days has that got left then? Uh, so that I... has, yeah, I think it's uh, five or six days left. Yeah, six days left on that campaign from the time you're seeing that uh, from Magic Games. Fully funded, as you might imagine. As I said at the beginning, you need the original Hellboy in order to get this. Um, but you can get that from the Mantic store nice and easy. Well, you don't need the original Hellboy if you're going just for the dice. Oh, or... if you want just the dice game, you can just buy the yeah. dice game. But yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Which would Very be cool. Wish, a little travel game. Yeah. Because like so. nobody's got the time to carry full games around other people's houses. No. Because you'll like arrange a game session, you'll get there, and then you'll be told in three hours' time we're back in lockdown and you have to rush off home. So you've only got time <laughs> to play your little dice game. You haven't got time to set up for now. <laughs> Oh, you're a day through a, a massive game of Twilight Imperium and you're told that you need to go home. Uh, no! Yeah. no lockdown <laughs> for three months. Not allowed. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we finish off on the Kickstarters uh, with one that I'm sure Jerry and Lloyd are going to like very much. And we have talked about this before and Jerry was like, oh, oh yes. No. No. Yes, there we <laughs> go. Go, there right, go. Lloyd. <laughs> uh, so this is the 1066 <laughs> Miniatures Collection by Crucible Crush, sculpted by Bob Merch. Uh, which we have looked at before in the news and and, and such uh, in the run-up to this. But this is a new set of 28mm metal miniatures, perfecto more, um, for the period of 1066, um, where you can play as the Anglo-Saxons or you can play as William the Conqueror or William the Bastard heading over the channel to uh, kick in some Anglo-Saxon teeth. Or as Futsal Miniatures put it this week, William the Conqueror, fantastic strategist and war leader or just lucky because the anglo-saxons were tired so there we go <laughs> could go either oh, way it, it could would. go either way uh but this basically i, I like oh, to work in the print i was just gonna say i like to work in the principle he was still a strategist yeah because he he refused to go when he was supposed to go mm-hmm. yeah. and invade england thus forcing the vikings to get ruffle stomped by exactly. the anglo-saxons yeah. and then making them come all the way south to mm-hmm. fight him so but if the guys from footsword turned up to fight him they'd be like you're sh-. and you know you are <laughs> and you know you are that's their opinion of them is it yeah. <laughs> that's what you shout from behind the safety of your shield wall. Yep. <laughs> the top of a very big hill yeah <laughs> Don't get me. Uh, but yeah, this uh, allows you to pick up a whole bunch of different sets. Uh, so you've got your standard armored and unarmored spearmen in here that you'll use yes. for the kind of rank and file. Um, obviously, you've got the different shield types for both the Saxons and the Normans in there. So you've got mm-hmm. that iconic shield, um, sort of kind of kite design, which is really cool. Sorry, teardrop design, which is really cool. Uh, and then you've also got lots of sort of uh, supplemental it's a, stuff. It's, it's still a kite shield, though, Ben, so you're all right. I wasn't sure whether or not it was a kite shield. Is it a kite shield? I would call yeah. it a kite shield. Yeah. 
Yeah. Someone someone corrected me elsewhere, just like the BBC corrected me on something, but I'll talk about that on the XLBS. But anyway, <laughs> uh, uh, we also have some elite uh, infantry here. Uh, so you've got your, sort of like your Saxons with Dane axes, you've got slingers, you've got archers, and the kind of uh, the, the peasants that have been drawn up um, from the fields to fight. And on the Norman side, you've got the Norman cavalry, you've got your crossbowmen, uh, and all that kind of thing going on there too. So you've got the invading force ready to go. Uh, you've got William, and then you've got Bishop, the, the Bishop Odo. Uh, I, I I keep thinking that he's like he was like a, the mad bishop or something, or like he was a horrible horrible person. But I might be thinking of the baby eating b- uh, bishop, bishop of, of Bath and Wells. Wells. Uh, <laughs> bishop Odo was his cousin. Yeah. He was yeah. also his chronicler. That was it. So yeah. It's, yeah. Um, uh, but then on the other side of things, you do have like Harold, but then you've got kind of like a set of elite warriors, which you could probably paint up as his sons if you wanted mm. to and use them in uh, in battle, which is really cool. Um, in addition to the uh, sort of core army sets that you can pick up, um, they've also got some stretch goals going on. Uh, so you'll be able to pick up a set of civilians and uh, sort of um, ladies of the court if you want as well, uh, to use in your games as a uh, sort of like stuff to sit at the back and kind of like as part of the wagon train and the objectives and that kind of thing, which would be really nice. Um, if you want to go down that skirmish route as well, you could also you make use of those. You've got like a, a wagon train too, which is nice. Uh, but yeah, uh, cool it's stuff. It's a highborn lady. It's a highborn lady. You have to have a highborn lady. Um, yeah, it is a very comprehensive set. And uh this is not going to be the end either. Uh, we talked about it before in the preview for this, but mm. um, as well as doing the Anglo-Saxons and the, uh, the Normans, they're also going to be working on uh, a Welsh force as well, uh, led by one of the kings. So if you want to play around with the Welsh, you'll soon get the chance to do so. I think this cool. is a good touch because mm. like, most of the time you don't see them for sale. And, yeah. now, and yeah. now I'm thinking like you, Ben, oh, I've got my tents or something erected further mm. off in the battlefield and I've got some minis to mill around the tents yeah. and stuff. yeah. You can bring the swan neck, as I believe she was called, to uh, to the tabletop and stuff. So, yeah. Really nice stuff. Uh, and as you can see, possibly very good for Saga. So, yeah. <laughs> for example, yeah. For example. Yeah. Yeah. That- Had to get it in there. Almost go. got to the end, guys. Almost. Yeah. Oh no, I said SAG earlier on. We didn't get anywhere near the end. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's yeah. nice as well, the fact that the various ways you can pick the packs up. Mm-hmm. So depending on what you need, if you need, you know, well, a 16-man pack, that's two Saga mm. uh, warrior sets there. So bish, bash, bosh, mm. away you go. Yeah. We can get the smaller five-man packs if you just need some uh, elites kicking around. Mm. I like since, options. Since we've mentioned Footsor, I wonder what these are like compared to the Footsor Normans and Saxons. Because... <laughs> You know, one of the things about picking up minis from different ranges is if they, yes, maybe they look slightly different, but then you get a lot of variety in your army then yeah. at that point as well. They scale very well with uh, Crusader minis and Artisan. Right. Yeah. So, so Crusader, the plastic no. Crusader minis? Or no, 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 no. Crusader minis uh, as a metal range. Um, so roughly the same size. I think Footsore might be slightly taller by a mill or two, and a bit finer, whereas the the uh the crusader stuff is a, a a bit shorter and stockier these these sort of fall in between they've, they've got the proportions more similar to footsore but they're they're not as tall as footsore if that mm. makes sense but you are literally only talking a couple of mil difference so it's not going to be well when they're dramatic. all based the same and they're in yeah. um uh, big war bands mm. i don't think you'd notice no, no. Well, I don't think it bothers me that much anyway, mixing and matching, because I tend to think we get a little bit hung up and all our miniatures have to look the same. When all you need to do is look at any video when me and Jerry stood beside each other and go, ha ha, not even <laughs> close to looking the same. Not even close. Uh, well, a Pete's... picture of me standing beside uh, Sam right here. <laughs> What's that got left? So 22 uh, days by the time you're seeing this. Yeah. Unfunded. But um, yeah, looks sweet. I'll be tempted on that one myself. But that brings us to the end of the show. Um, come and join us for the XLBS show on Sunday. That's the one we do for our Cult of Games members. If you want to support what we do here on Tabletop, come on over to the site, create an account, create a free account. Even having members over there helps support us. Like this video. Subscribe to the YouTube channel and get a comment in down below. And then next week, we're going to do this all again. 
looking forward to it and you'll get a, oh if you smash that like that bell button you'll get a notification when we come on you can see all those beautiful people again i'm yeah. lloyd by the way just in case you didn't realize ben's at the top jerry's down below and i've got free right down here below me that's us that's who we are <laughs> until next week happy gaming go ahead and check out our other content on screen now and while you're at it why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong go on you know you want to click it go on